When you lose something, it often turns up in the last place you'd expect to find it. That sometimes happens to archaeologists, too. They go looking for something feeling confident about what it is and where they'll find it. But then they either find something they weren't expecting or eventually find what they were looking for a long way from where it should be. Unexpected archaeological discoveries happen more than you'd expect, and this video contains the best recent examples. Of course, you don't necessarily have to be an archaeologist to make an archaeological discovery. It can happen to anybody at any time. We saw it happen in Ottawa, Canada in August 2021, as a pair of homeowners renovated their backyard. As contractors attempted to build new decking in the yard behind the home of Brad and Rene Seguin, they came across this rusty, decaying sword. It's not the prettiest artifact you'll ever see, but something told the couple that it might be valuable. They couldn't find anything useful on the internet, so they contacted military historians to see if they could identify it. The Canadian War Museum eventually came up with the answer. This sword is of the type that was used by both British and Canadian officers during the late 19th century. A little further digging confirmed that the sword was probably made in 1897 and would have been used by a member of an Ottawa regiment that fought in the Boer War. How it ended up under the yard is a mystery. The property was built in 1914, long after the war ended. The Siguins have decided to keep their lucky find, so it's now on display in their home. Most of us think that we have a pretty good idea of who the Vikings were. In our minds, they were a race of seafaring warriors who came from Scandinavia and swept through Britain and much of Europe, even making it as far as America. In August 2021, though, we discovered that things might not necessarily be quite that simple. In mid-2021, a team of researchers from Canada's Simon Fraser University completed the largest ever DNA sequencing study of Viking remains, taking samples from more than 400 subjects in Scandinavia, Iceland, Estonia, Russia, the UK, and further afield. To their immense surprise, the researchers found that many of the buried Vikings had British, Southern European, and even Asian DNA, and mostly had brown hair rather than blonde hair. There's overwhelming evidence of an extensive gene flow into Scandinavia from the British Isles in particular, thus undermining the idea that Vikings were purely Scandinavian stock. In fact, it now seems more likely that British people went to Scandinavia, became Vikings over the course of many generations, and then set off back to Britain to conquer their ancestral homeland. Our next item isn't strictly a recent discovery, but there's a new theory about its ownership. In 1975, an exceptionally well-preserved 12th century sword was discovered buried underneath a tree in the Novosibirsk region of Siberia. It's the only weapon of its kind that's ever been found in the Siberian province. Experts now think that it might have been the personal sidearm of the notorious Tsar Ivan the Terrible. The blade itself, though, is not Russian. It was most likely made somewhere close to the basin of the Rhine in Germany, and then had a silver handle added to it on the Scandinavian island of Gotland. Norse runes were etched onto the blade at around the same time. It would already have been several hundred years old by the time of Ivan the Terrible, but the trade relationships he developed with Western Europe during his reign would have enabled him to get his hands on it. He then later gave it to Ivan Koltso as a gift ahead of the conquest of Siberia. As the sword appears to have been dropped rather than buried deliberately, it's likely that it was lost in battle. The Malta's Monument in Turkey is already a fairly well-known structure to archaeologists. The 2,700-year-old monument has been studied so extensively by the end of the 19th century that we assumed we already knew everything we were ever going to know about it. In August 2021, we found out just how wrong that assumption was. We now know that the rock-cut site is three times deeper than we ever thought it was, extending several stories below the ground. And that's not all. The monument is sat directly on top of an even older Phrygian temple. The discovery was made during an emergency excavation project that was intended to help preserve the monument, not to find out anything new about it. 
The remarkable find came as a total shock to everybody involved. The temple, like the monument on top of it, was cut directly into the rock. It's probably 3,000 years old, and perhaps even older than that. The fact it's carved into the rock is significant because the Phrygians believed that Sybil, their mother goddess, literally lived inside solid rock. Carving a temple into it would, therefore, have been like cutting into her body. Excavating the temple will be a slow and delicate process, but work has already begun. When archaeologists began excavating Zerzavan Castle in Diyarbakir, Turkey in mid-2021, they hoped to find Roman relics. The castle is around 3,000 years old and was used as a settlement and barracks by the Roman Empire during the time of Roman occupation. What they weren't expecting to find is this seal, which comes from the early years of the USA's existence as an independent country. The badge was buried in the eastern walls of the castle in an archaeological layer that ought to be 2,000 years old at least, but the design on this seal didn't appear until 1782. The Latin words e pluribus unum appear as an inscription on the badge. This translates as, from multiplicity to unity, and was the first official slogan of the United States of America. The 13 stars that appear above the eagle's head represent the 13 colonies that made up the USA back then. Seals like this have been found by archaeologists before, but only ever in the USA or the United Kingdom. How it came to be buried under the walls of a Turkish castle is unknown. Archaeologists are considering several theories, including the idea that someone might have buried it here over 200 years ago as a joke. We're not here to tell you whether or not you should believe in ghosts, but we can tell you that human beings have believed in them for thousands of years. This Babylonian tablet is thought to feature the oldest drawing of a ghost in the world. It's 3,500 years old and goes a step further than simply drawing a specter. It also contains advice on how to exercise it. The advice, however, is a little odd. The ghost is shown as a bearded, angry-looking man, being led to the underworld on a rope or a chain by a woman. The accompanying inscription helpfully explains that the best way to rid yourself of a male ghost is to give them a living woman to fall in love with and take back to the afterlife. The tablet has been owned by the British Museum since the 19th century, but wasn't studied in detail until 2021. The job of studying was made harder by the fact that it's incomplete. At least half of it is missing. For all we know, the other half of the tablet might explain how to get rid of female ghosts. Sumatran fishermen recently found a large treasure trove of priceless artifacts, including a Buddha that's worth millions of dollars on its own. This is one of several such discoveries that have happened in the vicinity of the Musi River in the past five years. It's looking increasingly likely that Sumatra might be the Srivijaya Empire's Island of Gold, a place that was once thought to be nothing more than a myth. They were a civilization of unimaginable wealth and power between the 7th century and the 13th, but then they suddenly vanished from history 700 years ago. Nobody knows why. With the benefit of hindsight, Sumatra has always been an obvious candidate to be the island of gold. Aside from all these riches that fishermen keep turning up, it's also blessed with enormous gold deposits and other precious natural resources. Many centuries ago, it would have been the first point of arrival for those coming to trade in Southeast Asia. That's reflected in the makeup of the goods retrieved by the fishermen, which include fine tablewares from China, and gold and silver jewelry from Persia and India. It seems like it's high time that professional archaeologists came here for a full survey, rather than leaving it all to the fishermen. There's a little bit of controversy about this next discovery. It's an artifact that was found in February 2021 during an archaeological dig close to Nesher Ramla in Israel. The object is an animal bone, upon which symbols are engraved. The controversy stems from the fact that the archaeologists responsible for the discovery believe that the symbols were carved more than 120,000 years ago. 
That puts it among the oldest examples of humans using symbolism in the world, and represents an unusual behavior, based on what we think we know about the early humans of that period. The Levant is a large and ancient territory, but this bone is the oldest discovery of its kind to be made within it. Fragments of ceramic vessels and stone tools found within the bone suggests that there might have been a small settlement here during the Middle Paleolithic era. The symbols on the animal bone are little more than stripes, but experts have been able to rule out the possibility that they were created accidentally during butchery. The cuts are the same depth, the same shape, and end in the same direction. It must have had a meaning to whoever did it but we'll never know what that meaning was. Archaeologists in Turkmenistan face a race against time to solve the mysteries of the cave city of Ekadeshik before it's lost to them forever. The city is carved from clay sandstone on the banks of the Murgab River, but nobody knows when. Some experts think the labyrinthine caves are only a few centuries old, whereas others say their age is more likely to measure in the thousands. The 44 rooms of the city are arranged across two stories that descend over 100 feet below the ground, with walls so thick that no sound from the outside world gets in. The air is one of a place of great secrecy, but nobody knows who made Ekadeshik or what its purpose is or was. It only has one point of exit or entry though, so it's likely that whoever carved it wanted its existence to remain hidden. This might have been a place of sanctuary for early Christians, or perhaps a private place for Buddhist monks. It seems like the rooms on the top floor may have been residential, with the rooms beneath them tending to be larger and perhaps intended as communal spaces. The problem is that some of the rooms have collapsed already, and more will collapse soon if nothing is done to protect this enigmatic place. Legend has it that the Church of the Apostles was built during the 5th century in Bethsaida, Palestine, and so named because it stood where the home of the apostles Andrew and Peter once was. The problem for historians is that they've never been able to find the Church of the Apostles. In fact, they couldn't even find the village of Bethsaida. That might have changed in September 2021. Archaeologists have spent several years excavating El Araj, a site close to the confluence of the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River, and they now feel confident that they've found the village and the church. According to them, this ancient mosaic proves it. It's a stunning Byzantine-style mosaic floor, roughly 1,500 years old, and bearing ancient Greek inscriptions. The inscriptions confirm that the building that once stood here was a Christian church, built during the era of Byzantine rule. The team working at the site has already uncovered enough Roman ruins in the vicinity to confirm that there was once a settlement here, so the mystery of Bethsaida and the Church of the Apostles finally appears to be at an end. Archaeologists have long suspected that the Romanelli Cave, situated on Italy's Adriatic coast in Apulia, played host to humans thousands of years ago. Recently, they found the conclusive proof they were looking for. Paleolithic-era artwork was found in the cave as long ago as 1905, but those paintings are so close to the entrance that they couldn't be taken as proof of permanent occupation. These paintings are different. They're a mixture of geometric signs and patterns painted by people tracing their fingers through deposits of moon milk. Some of the more detailed images are animals like birds. There are similarities between these newly discovered works of art and others that have been found elsewhere in Italy, as well as France and Spain. That suggests a shared cultural heritage spanning enormous distances across Europe thousands of years ago. The oldest of the newly discovered cave paintings is around 14,000 years ago, whereas the most recent is more like 11,000 years old. That confirms that not only were there people this deep inside the cave, but that those people stayed here for at least 3,000 years. For 40,000 years, this cave chamber inside Vanguard Cave Gibraltar was sealed off by sand. In 2021, the sand seal was finally broken, and archaeologists got to take a look inside it for the first time. They now think 
that this might have been a hiding place for one of the very last surviving groups of Neanderthals. The surface of the cave chamber is covered in the remains of griffin vultures, hyenas, lynx, and large whelks. It's unlikely that all of these creatures got into the cave of their own accord, so they were probably carried here by Neanderthals. Vanguard Cave is part of Gorham's Cave Complex, a place that's turned up several ancient discoveries in the past. The contents of this previously sealed chamber are likely to be more significant than anything that's been found there in the past, though. Experts have already found what might be a Neanderthal cave painting, as well as evidence of seal butchery and feathers plucked from birds that might have been worn as ornaments. 40,000 years ago is about the time the last of the Neanderthals vanished, so perhaps the ones who lived here came into the caves knowing they were the last of their kind. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.